four and a half sections of land of a sovereign and versatile American area that is the way the US Naval Force portrays their Nimitz-class transporter a great many people understand what a plane carrying warship or a submarine is nevertheless there are seven classifications of current warship which comprises of plane carrying warships cruisers destroyers frigates corvettes land and or water capable attack ships and submarines what might be said about ships in any case a ship was an enormous reinforced warship with huge type firearms they were the most remarkable kind of warship during the late 19th and mid 20th 100 years yet as fresher kinds of warships began venturing to every part of the blue water ships disappeared with the last one being decommissioned toward the finish of the virus war and could be other no more crowd inquiries during the video that is what the remarks segment is for so when your journey through this video is over you know why destroyers are called as such despite the fact that all warships have the ability to obliterate and you would at last realize what separates these classes of boats from each other or will you the primary plane carrying warships became functional in the mid 1920s putting away sending off recuperating and overhauling airplane adrift empowering a country with airborne tasks far away from home and near the foe is extremely profitable for clear reasons a solitary super transporter holds sufficient capability to match the whole flying core of certain countries a transporter air wing can perform north of 150 strike missions immediately hitting more than 700 focuses on a day yet they can likewise safeguard cordial powers lead electronic fighting aid extraordinary activities and do look and save missions super transporters can oblige four to five thousand faculty including the boats organization air wing and other care staff despite the fact that plane carrying warships truly do have surface to air rockets firearms and other deadly implement they as a rule don't travel solo rather they travel with an armada made out of different classes of military boats called the transporter strike bunch which is regularly comprised of a plane carrying warship no less than one cruiser and two destroyers or frigates and a transporter air wing of 65 to 70 airplanes a transporter strike gathering could likewise every so often incorporate submarine strategy ships and a stockpile transport a plane carrying warship frequently goes about as the order stage for huge fight gatherings or global teams plane carrying warships customarily ran on diesel fuel yet a portion of the fresher plane carrying warships are atomic fueled in pioneer times a cruiser would have been cruising the world appearance off their banner and addressing the mind-boggling force that could be brought to bear a long way from home the name plays remained yet the part isn't precisely cruising around any longer during the period between the finish of World War I in 1918 and the start of World War II in 1939 otherwise called the interwar period cruisers were restricted by settlement to a most extreme size of 10,000 tons two sorts were characterized by arrangement the weighty cruisers conveyed any place between 8 to 10 8 inch firearms and the light cruisers conveyed 12 to 15 6 inch firearms yet both weighty and light cruisers conveyed a weighty battery of optional and hostile to airplane firearms and wartime cruisers were to work alone on the high oceans to prohibit foe business yet additionally to safeguard the battlefront against foe light cruisers these were for the most part weighty cruiser jobs yet the two kinds of cruisers generally have maximum velocities more than 30 bunches the present cruisers are essentially directed rocket warships going in size somewhere in the range of 7,000 to 10,000 tons unquestionably the world's biggest naval forces can stand to construct and work current cruisers pressively the US and Russia in this day and age the job of the cruiser relies upon the naval force that it's utilized in the U.S. naval force cruisers are fundamentally an enemy of air guard vessel while in the Russian naval force there are hostile to deliver stages different missions incorporate business evaluations and shore bombardments despite the fact that the U.S. naval force sooner or later had various atomic fueled cruisers in its armada they were completely decommissioned during the 90s since they were considered too costly to even think about building and keep up with okay enough cruising how about we continue on toward destroyers before we discuss destroyers we want to momentarily discuss torpedoes in 1866 an english designer called robert whitehead imagined the principal successful self-moved submerged torpedo eponymously named whitehead torpedo at the time ships were vigorously defensively covered and safeguarded against gunfire yet just over the waterline so the development of whitehead torpedoes changed everything unexpectedly there was a weapon that could be carried on a little quick and moderately cheap boat called a torpedo boat that could strike an enormous boat submerged bypassing all its shield security a torpedo could and even sink a ship with one blow yet stand by with all its combat hardware is there any good reason why an enormous ship wouldn't have the option to demolish a little torpedo boat see the turbine motor 
permitted the torpedo boats to arrive at speeds that tested in enormous type yet sluggish shooting firearms on the ships and cruisers subsequently another class of boats arose to shield the fundamental armada from torpedo boats and it was imaginatively called torpedo boat destroyers torpedo boat destroyers were bigger than torpedo boats yet a whole lot more modest than the cruisers and this implied that they were more flexibility and better furnished to manage the torpedo boats so they began venturing to every part of the blue waters with the armada to safeguard them against torpedo boats yet soon after the actual destroyers were furnished with torpedoes which permitted them to destroy greater foe warships past the scope of the little coast saw torpedo boats and that was the finish of it for the torpedo boats yet not for the torpedo boat destroyers which are currently alluded to as destroyers were defenders of the armada so when submarines became pragmatic the destroyers were furnished with profundity charges sonar and other enemy of submarine weapons and turned into the submarine's main foe and when the airplane turned into a significant danger to the maritime armada destroyers embraced enemy of air rockets so this is the way destroyers turned into the handyman among warships today destroyers are the biggest surface soldier worked by most naval forces running in size as much as 6,000 tons destroyers were quick ships commonly equipped for speeds more than 30 bunches in quiet oceans yet with the destroyers getting bigger and all the more Intensely outfitted the contrast between the cruisers and destroyers have extraordinarily decreased while a cruiser ought to ostensibly be greater this isn't generally the case yet a cruiser is for the most part considered to have more noteworthy offices for order and control in the U.S. naval force which frequently implies cruisers have more space and extra energy to drive the extra correspondence gear and in order and control space to facilitate the guard of the armada like destroyers frigates are very normal boats in the naval forces armada they're fast to move and their job is to accompany and shield bigger vehicles from air surface and submerged dangers frigates are one of the littlest blue water surface warriors in the past they used to convey a lighter fundamental battery than destroyers for instance three three inch or two five inch weapons would have been run of the mill nowadays they might have hostile to compressed air firearms and maybe a little battery of torpedo tubes anyway there not especially appropriate to theater air protection their solidarity is typically in their enemy of submarine weapons for instance the illustrious naval forces duke class of frigates have specific enemy of submarine fighting capacities and are fitted with improved sonar gear and torpedoes hostile to submarine fighting frigates accompany helipads and holders that oblige helicopters fit for distinguishing and going after atomic submarines utilizing torpedoes and profundity charges frigates are generally more slow than destroyers albeit in current times there's not a massive distinction in their speed the present frigates frequently dislodge as much as 3,000 tons and are normally equipped for maximum velocities of 27 to 30 bunches one of the quicker frigates is the indian naval forces chivalic class which can go at rates of up to 32 bunches a few european naval forces for example the Dutch, French, German, and Spanish utilized the term frigate for both their destroyers and their frigates vessels that are more modest than frigates are commonly recognized as corvettes or rocket boats which are not sufficiently large to have a full air safeguard radar and hence are not used to accompany different vessels or shield huge regions they play a greater amount of an offense decide given that they can utilize their enemy of boat rockets to assault and are little in flexibility enough. To try not to be hit they're likewise regularly not fit or fit for working in blue waters so they ordinarily stay nearer to the shores a rocket boat is a little specialty furnished with a few enemy of boat rockets they have low expenses and are fairly an outgrowth of torpedo boats from the second great war a corvette is a more modest rendition of a cutting edge frigate yet is typically outfitted towards one kind of mission either surface or hostile to submarine fighting the primary littoral battle transport USS Opportunity was dispatched in 2008. Literal battleships are AU.S naval force configuration intended to supplant the Perry class frigates while the LCS class ships are more modest than the frigate class that they're supplanting they offer a comparable degree of weaponry while requiring under 50 of the group they can have a maximum velocity that surpasses 40 bunches literal battleships are more modest vessels and are appropriate for literal or near shore tasks in different nations naval forces the nearest thing to literal battle boats will be watch vessels or corvettes one fascinating component of literal battleships was their secluded plan they could be reconfigured for various jobs like enemy of submarine fighting or surface fighting by changing their weapon framework sensors and mission teams these module changes were imagined to occur inside a couple of hours yet by and by they took significantly longer and ended up being strategically troublesome in a 
2016 declaration the U.S. Naval Force deserted the particular idea for literal battle delivers and chose to utilize them with a solitary module land and or water capable attack ships are utilized to assist land and backing with establishing powers on hostile area initially they look like plane carrying warships yet they're fundamentally intended for supporting helicopters they can likewise convey vertical and short departure and setting down airplane most present day land and or water capable. Attack ships have a well deck which is a shelter-like deck situated at the waterline in the harsh of the boat when the well deck is overwhelmed landing create like air cushion vehicle can be sent off and recuperated without the requirement for a crane, music. A submarine likewise normally alluded to as a sub is a watercraft that is equipped for free submerged activities submarines commonly can be categorized as one of three drive classes diesel electric transmission atomic power and air. Autonomous impetus all ebb and flow submarines in the US naval force are atomic fueled yet there are a couple of different nations like Russia France the UK China and India which likewise have atomic power sub in their armada submarines range in size from submarines with a dislodging of under 150 tons to long range rocket submarines with a removal of as much as 48,000 tons when lowered and no matter what their size they're undeniably alluded to as boats there are three significant sorts of submarines in the US Naval Force Assault Submarines Journey Rocket Submarines and Long Range Rocket Submarines Assault Submarines use torpedoes as their primary deadly implement and have all the more a multi-job mission they are more modest in size making them quicker and more flexibility voyage rocket submarines are regularly bigger and more slow boat center. Around significant distance strikes utilizing directed rockets Long Range Rocket Submarines as the name proposes can convey and send off. Atomic long-range rockets assuming you investigate the seven classes of warships that were simply evaluated plane carrying warships land and or water capable attack ships and submarines are effectively recognizable from each other both apparently and in the job that they play anyway the appearance and jobs that cruisers destroyers frigates and corvettes once had have been obscured over the long run. The vast majority of them currently have a blend of against surface enemy of submarine and Against airplane weapons and their size and relocation doesn't be guaranteed to fall inside the customary class assignments it's similar to iPhones, iPads and iPods they used to appear to be unique from each other and do various things yet presently they all have cameras contact screen and FaceTime with the main genuine separating factor being the earphone jack on the iPod.